recording. You just said it succinctly. We're we're choosing the day you want with Arletta Allen. Arletta, I am so excited you're here. This is going to be fantastic. I had just, I'm so happy to be here. I just asked her, I said, how's your day going? She said, it's going great because I'm choosing for it to go great. I'm choosing the day I want. I was like, yes. Because that's what we do over here, okay? We well, choose our days because you know what? Life, life will always, life. <laughs> life will always do what life does okay and none of us are exempt so we have to be willing each and every day to choose the outcome of our day because if we don't put in our input then we're likely not to attract the thing that we the very thing that we want back in our direction I want good days I want even great days so that, that's you know what we're going to speak that thing into existence we're having an amazing day <laughs> You just, <laughs> you just life as a verb. You just said, because life will, you know, life. Life. <laughs> amazing right there. Okay, so who are you? You're obviously fabulous. So who are you? What do you do? And why are you in the Empower Network? Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm Arletta Allen and I am a top motivational speaker, inspirational speaker, professional speaker, TEDx speaker, uh, but my uh, my whole entire ideal is to really, really um, empower women. So I'm all about advocating for women. I'm all about building up women and um, reaching us from the stage. Um, because primarily, I don't know if you know this, but the speaker field is dominated by men. And so there's not a whole lot of women out there that are dominating main stages. Oh, And so, yes, 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 it's a proven fact. Look it up. Look it up. But yes. So um, I'm a professional speaker. I'm also a best-selling author. I'm also a trauma recovery expert. And I advocate for those who have suffered through domestic violence, those who have suffered through any type of sexual trauma. I advocate. I put on events. I attract people to um, those um, presentations and stages. And I try to do my best to bring about goodness in the world. That's who I am. Well, I bet you do bring about goodness in the world. So I'd say it's working. <laughs> I like to believe so. I like to believe so. Okay, so Arletta, where did your journey start? Because yes, you're this magnificent, in a good way, like you're this butterfly, you're this beaming butterfly of color and and opportunity and anticipatory. But where did you start? Where did you come from? From the pit. Okay. I started in adversity. Wow. I started from nothing. Okay. I came from poverty. I came from marginalizations. I came from not enough. I came from an abusive household. I came from dysfunctionality. Hmm. I came from learning to build my own self-worth when I couldn't receive the validation I needed from my own father. Wow. I came from building brick by brick. And even when those bricks were distorted and thrown all over the place, finding the courage and the motivation to get up and continue to build. Um, my life has not been easy at all, not at all. I have so much adversity in my background, but it gave me enough to not want to see anyone else suffer through the things I've suffered through. And so I'm driven and motivated by my love for helping and loving on others. And so that's what I do. I just try to gift to the world the very thing that I love to feel coming back towards me. Okay. Well, you, okay. So there's in your, you asked the question. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. You're on fire. But it's like, you just, everything you just said, you just showed us you've crossed over from victim mentality to victor mentality. Cause I, so tell, tell us more, just tell us more. What have you learned? What do you got for us? I have so much to give you. Um, because I'm a strong believer in taking the things that happen for us hmm. versus happening to us. And so I could look at my past. I could look at where I come from. I could look at um, the abuse, being a teen parent. I could look at um, the failed marriages and the, hmm. the abusive, narcissistic, sociopathic relationships. I could look at all of that and I could choose to define me by it. But that's not my choice. We started off the conversation talking about being able to choose your day. I believe that that registers in every element of your life, every element, because you don't get a chance. I mean, 
it was Maya Angelou. She said it. She says, we may not choose the events that happen in our lives, but we can choose not to be reduced by them. Hmm. And so I may not have, as a child, been in control of the things that took place in my life. I may not have chose my parents. I may not have chose where I grew up. I didn't choose this skin color. I didn't choose a lot of things about our letter, but I can choose not to allow those things to reduce me to nothing. Wow. And that's why that's 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 why I get up every single day and I choose because it's imperative for my survival that I make the choice. I got to choose. Well, how did you cross over to that a lot of things in you had to break and what you had to learn a lot of key things to get to where you that is now who you are because we are not maybe the odd child is raised like that but most people go through a whole lot of breaking before they get to their greatness mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. wow it's the uh, it's the uh, resilience and you'll hear that like echo you'll hear that echo all over the place right now. That word resilience is going insane. Why? Because people are going through life and stuff is happening. You know, life is knocking them off their butts and they're trying to figure out how do I get back after that? But the trick, the trick with resilience is that people don't talk about what happens after you bounce back. What's, what's the formula? Okay, you talk about resilience. Okay, I made it through and I bounced back after adversity. But what sustains me after the bounce back? For me, it's been my faith in God. Mm. For me, it's been my willingness to be the love that I want to see in the world. Mm. It's, it's me looking Arletta in the face and being honest about a framework of healing that I apply to my own life. And it's, it's spelled out H-E-A-L and I apply it. And the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to be honest with yourself. The main thing that people do is lie to themselves all the time. They try to convince themselves that their reality is not their reality. And that's the that's the first place where you fail. The next thing you want to you gotta want to do, you're gonna get want to get into the empowerment network. E empowerment. Get yourself around some resources and get yourself in groups and around people who are supportive and who can empower you to get up from that broken place, to get up from that space where where you feel like you're in despair. The next letter is the letter A, and that's for action. That means find out what it is that you need to do right now in this space. Don't worry about projecting into the future, but right now in this moment, what can I do in order to propel myself from the place of bottomless pit to the place where I wanna be, or at least take some steps in that direction? What can I do? Because we all have something that we can do. Sometimes we're just not looking deep enough. Hmm. And the last letter is that L, and that's called let it go. Sometimes we hold on to the very thing that's breaking us. Sometimes we, we lack control of situations and we want to control things. And these things are things that we have absolutely no control over. The best thing that you can do is let it go and start from right where you are. And if that means you got to do that every day and sometimes even several times a day, then be willing to do that because you are worth it and you've always been worth it. I counted myself worthy. Oh, I love that. I counted myself worthy. Love it. Okay. Can you, I would like to know what is your dream? What are some dreams you have that in the next three, four, five, whatever number of years, what does our letter dream about? Okay. So not in years for the next few months. <laughs> yeah. Because tomorrow's not promised. And so I'm not going to project too far, but yeah. I am going to say this. I see myself standing on the world's largest stage. And I see myself with arms limp from hugging and embracing others. I see myself being the very hope and renaming myself hope for others who have lost it. Oh. I see myself impacting the world on the biggest scale, like beyond what my imagination can even begin to fathom. There is so much hurt and so much pain in the world right now. And especially post pandemic, everybody's learning life all over again. Nobody, not one of us has a formula for it. We're all literally flying by the seat of our pants. We are, and that's just the truth. And everyone who's been successful up until this point, it's like, oops, <laughs> I done fell into success. How did that happen? 
because you didn't have a formula. And the truth is, is that you met your people. You met your support system. You did something and something worked and something clicked, but it wasn't because you planned it. It was because, oh my gosh, accidentally. Oh my God, how did that happen? And so um, I want to be more strategic about the, the relationships that I build, the people that I contact with, and um, those that I allow around me. And that's why I'm here in the Empower Network. Because I had watched you like from a distance for a while before I started jumping in on the calls and things like that. I was like, really feeling this platform. I love the energy that's given. And then the value, the value that's added on this platform is insane. I mean, it's ridiculously insane. And I'm not even saying that for a buffer. I'm saying that because I've been in a million groups and I've been to um, different forums and they make you pay for that information. And you're casting it in a live Facebook group for free. I mean, and it's stuff that works. <laughs> like, I'm just like blown away. So I'm happy, so excited to be here. But our let us dream of dominating the stage someday, name in lights and women and men, as far as the eyes can see, just there to love me back in return. That's my dream. <laughs> I could listen to you for hours. Okay, so where do we go from here? I want to go to some comments. Is that okay with you if we go to some comments? Absolutely. Mm. Dorothy, hello. Good day. Hi, Dorothy. Bronson, Bronson is uh, just loving what you're throwing down here. Gut punches right there. <laughs> okay. What are the best parts when you see someone, their life has changed and you work with someone, whether they read, read a book of yours or you work with them, what, what is the most rewarding thing to you, Arletta? The transformation. Hmm. Because ultimately, um, like for me, I always use the butterfly and it was funny to me that you, you said, you're like, just like a bumbling butterfly, just so radiant. And I was like, oh my goodness, I wonder if he did some research and he knows that the butterfly is what I use for representation. I always have a butterfly on me somewhere. Oh. I'm always like, my, my book covers have butterflies on them. Oh. I'm all about transformation. And so the thing about that butterfly is that before that butterfly becomes something beautiful, it has to crawl on its belly and it has to crawl up a tree and it has to scrape the bottom half of its stomach and become raw. And the adversity is not in whether or not it's going to make it to become a butterfly. It's whether or not it'll even have the strength to get up the tree to cocoon, to become. Oh. So think about it. Think about a caterpillar crawling on it. Well, we'll just wait till it catches up because I don't want to miss its belly trying to make its way up a tree to its home. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I hope they're hearing what I'm saying. Let's it's just, the transformation in the journey. Yes. The transformation in the journey. So can I touch on something here? So go ahead. Every successful Hollywood movie has a hero's two journeys. So it's Frodo going to Mordor. It's. Mm -hmm. Luke and Han and Leia going to the Death Star, but the audience doesn't care about the external journey about the caterpillar becoming a beautiful butterfly unless we tell the story of how the caterpillar changed as a person and, and got to there internally. So it's how we change. Mm -hmm. That's the inside journey, the external journey. So what you're talking about, the transformation crawling on your belly, this is what makes us real. This is what makes us relatable. That's exactly right. And for me, it was my lack of self-confidence. It was me looking myself in the mirror and only validating myself by what my father told me I was. Mm. Mm, sounds like you're listening to different voice these days. Sounds like, yeah. Oh, just losing the, hold, hold tight, everybody. We're going to get the signal back. Lovely. And so I had to over... It's looking in that mirror, seeing mm. only what he saw. Mm. And for me, 
It wasn't good things. My own father told me I would be nobody. Mm. My own father put me to shame and told me I was worthless. My own father built me up. So when I got outside to the world, I began to accept anything because all I wanted was validation. I just wanted somebody to tell me I was special. I just wanted to be loved just like everybody else. But what I found was I was like, I was defeating myself because I didn't realize that it mattered what I thought about me. Hmm. And how many times do we take the irrational, harsh, harmful words and things that people say to us and we register those and we allow for those to take us to that next step in our journey instead of allowing the things that we placed on the inside to guide us. And so that, that was my transformation. That was my butterfly transformation. But the part I didn't tell you was once that butterfly gets up the tree, that caterpillar gets up the tree and its belly's all raw and it feels like it can't take another step. And it finally gets the, the motivation and the courage that it takes to drop its body below a branch so that it can find its safety, so it can cocoon up. The whole time that it was on its belly, crawling from that sidewalk up that tree and onto that branch, it was building the tenacity that it needed for its wings when it got inside the cocoon. So everything that you face off with in this life is building you for something better. It's building you for something grand. And if you just stay within, cocoon up, stay within the place, stay in that spot, because a lot of times when adversity comes, we run from it. Hmm. Adversity comes to make us, not to break us. And I will tell you this, I've done a smooth bend several times in my life, but I've never broken. I don't declare brokenness over my life. I'm not broken. I'm not a broken person. I've never been broken. Smooth bend, no break. God has been my sustenance. He has been what sustained me. It's my faith and it's the love that exudes from me. And I'm confident in that. That love conquers all. And so I, I, I live to tell about it and I'm grateful to be in this moment right here. Wow. Every moment. Wow. Okay, well, how would you like people to connect with you, Arletta? Because there's the people that reach out to you be like, I want more of this woman. Well, you can find me everywhere on LinkedIn, YouTube, um, Facebook, um, Instagram, everywhere at Arletta Allen Inspires. And um, you can find my book on Amazon and every major seller. And it's called Defy the Odds, Making the Transition from Trauma to Triumph. I talked about being a trauma recovery expert. So I also coach others, mainly primarily women through their traumatic experiences, whether it be divorce trauma, betrayal trauma, whatever type of trauma, childhood trauma, whatever it may be that you faced off with that has you stuck. I take you on a journey with me and I show you how I did it. And I help you to apply those same principles to your life as well. I'm also a speaker and a trainer. And so I train other speakers how to take the stage. And so, hey, if you're interested in any of my services, you can find me everywhere. Just send me an inbox. I respond. Wow. So you show up as the guide in people's journey so that they can learn to become the hero of their own journey and you let them you better look listen you better repeat yourself <laughs> that was so good well that's what people are looking for people in market, people don't care if if i'm the hero in my journey for other people in all marketing i have to show up as the guide for them so that they can be the hero in their journey that's why yes. I respond to people that are bragging about, look at all, look at the hero I am. And so, no, it's let me be the guide so that you can be the hero of your journey because you are supposed to be the hero of your journey. That's right. Your willingness to reach back and grab somebody else. It's mm -hmm. not about you. Your journey was never about you. Your journey was always for somebody else. Always. Mm -hmm. That's how we keep the goodness in the world. We got to give it back. Yeah. What is that verse? Too much has been given. Much is required. Much is required. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you've been on the Empower Network, uh, listening or watching, you have been witnessing the absolutely fantabulous Arletta Allen. 
Arlette, I'll be reaching out to you after thank uh, after this recording. Thank you for being here. Thanks for being the power, our person to come and deliver, deliciously deliver this gift that we've all had. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've been truly honored to be here with you today. Truly honored. Me too. Okay. Well, we'll I'm going to chat, message you after this. We'll chat soon, everybody. Thanks for watching. Yes, Thanks, Madam. Please.